Hello readers, I'm the Avid Reader and today we're reviewing Alpha and Omega written by Harry Turdelove in 2019. So this is a quite unique alternative history book. It's a book about what if the end of days actually happened. So what if the Jewish Christian or Muslim prophecy became true. And of the third of standalones I have read so far, it's a very good book. His series are better, but for a standalone, this is among the best. And the good thing about this book is that you get multiple perspectives of how the end of days happens. So you get secular perspectives, you get Jewish perspectives, you get Christian perspectives, and you get Muslim perspectives. And most of this book takes place in Israel, so you also get to learn a bit about the Israeli culture and how it is to live around the Arab neighbors and the differences between secular Jews, religious Jews, Arab and Jewish Israelis. And this book is a slow build up in the prophecy, so you have one thing and then you have another thing happening and the really big thing happens at the very end so turtle love does not rush this plot at all now let's talk about the characters so you have Chaim and yitzhak avigad who are religious jews who live on a kibbutz and these are Jewish kids who are raised in a way where they're deprived from a lot of normal things in childhood because they're supposed to be ritually pure if God returns. And you have Eric Katz and his girlfriend Orly, and they are archaeologists. But Eric is an American and Orly is uh, Israeli. So in this book you also get to see the differences between American Jews and Israeli Jews because American Jews are adapted to the Christian culture, Israeli Jews are adapted to their Jewish culture. Then you have Gabriela and Brandom who are are B-tier media people and they're kind of cutthroats. Then you have Lester Stark who's an American Southern televangelist and for a televangelist he's quite reasonable he doesn't make big claims. Then you have the Grand Mufti Haji Jamal Ashrawi and you have the Waqf head Ibrahim Al-Rahman. Waqf are those who handle the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. It's an important Muslim holy place. And then another important character who you don't get a perspective of but is quite crucial in this story is Rabbi Shlomo Kupferman. Eventually he kind of makes himself as the self-chosen high priest of the Jews. So let's get to the plot. The book begins with Yitzhak and Chaim Avigad going to the USA and bringing a red heifer which is a cow to Israel and they're treating this cow quite well they call her Shoshana but this is a future sacrificial cow which they're gonna cut the throat off eventually so throughout this story you have Chaim who develops this relationship with the cow and he's sad that he knows that eventually this cow is going to be slaughtered you have the media people Gabriela and Brandon who traveled to Tel Aviv to witness this red heifer but while they're there you have a dirty bomb dropped in Tel Aviv by Islamic terrorists which kills a bunch of people and you also have some radiation now in Tel Aviv although it goes away to reasonable levels eventually and in response Israel bombs Syria so the Syrian president dictator Assad is killed and you have the archaeologists Eric and Orly during a digging campaign they actually find the Ark of the Covenant which is an important thing in Judaism and soon afterwards you have Israeli elections and because of the terrorist attack and finding the Ark of the Covenant the right-wing parties win by a landslide so biggest of all you have the moderate Likud party who wins and then you also have the religious Jewish parties who wins so together they form a coalition of two-thirds in the Israeli parliament and the Israeli government under Netanyahu decide to make Rabbi Shlomo Kupferman minister for religious affairs so now he's kind of de facto the head priest in Judaism and you have Gabriella who tries to get Shlomo Kupferman to allow her to open the Ark of the Covenant and eventually he says okay but you're gonna sign a waiver if you die this is not my fault and she agrees to do this but Brandon who's a cutthroat wants to take all of the credits so during a dinner he roofies her brings her to her hotel room and goes to open the Ark of the Covenant instead of her but when he touches it he just falls down and dies from this point onwards there is no doubt that there's some supernatural stuff happening but this is about halfway in the book a lot of things that happens in this book although there's a bunch of superstition can happen in reality especially in the first half of the book with the Israeli government very right-wing now they decide that they're gonna disassemble the dome of the rock build it someplace else and they're gonna rebuild the Jewish first temple and of course the Muslims get angry at this you have the Muslim leaders in Palestine, Israel, who go into hiding. So Haji Jamal Ashrawi, the Grand Mufti, and you also have the Waqf head, 
Ibrahim al Rahman, who tries to do the same, but al Rahman gets killed by an Israeli drone before he manages to escape into hiding. And in response to this, Iran decides to try to nuke Israel. But when they try to do this, a couple of very, very weird things happen. First of all, the nuclear missiles just disappear, basically are plopped out of the sky. No one understands what happens. The Iranians don't understand it, the Israelis don't understand it, the Americans don't understand it, the Russians don't understand it. And second, the whole Iranian leadership just suddenly dies. The Grand Ayatollah falls dead, the President falls dead, and the Defense Minister falls dead. And in the office of the President, there's some Aramaic written, which is a language that has ties to Hebrew, so there's some weird religious stuff happening here also. Because the Mossad may be skilled, but there's no way they could just go into Iran and kill all these three high-ranking leaders. And the Palestinians decide to launch mortar attacks on the Temple Mount in Israel, but the consequences of this is that they hit the graveyard there, and also they break open the Golden Gate. And Chaim Avigad and Yitzhak are there for the sacrifice of the Red Heifer. Chaim tries to stop it, but he fails. The Red Heifer's throat is opened up, so the cow dies. And Chaim becomes mad and he runs away, hops onto normal ground, so now he's no longer ritually pure, and runs into the cemetery, and he hears a bunch of ghosts who follow him. So now, Chaim is the messiah. The world is amazed by this, so now even Kupferman has to treat him with respect. But to calm down, Chaim goes into a falafel shop, and he meets a girl he likes there called Shoshana also. And Isis launches another attack, this time on top of Bulldozer, and then you have Chaim who shows up, with the Ark of the Covenant, and that Ark of the Covenant launches some beams or some magic stuff, which kills all of the terrorists. And all of the bullets shot at Chime misses him. And with Brandon gone from the show now, you have Gabriella who decides to make the preacher Lester Stark part of her program. And Lester Stark agrees to this. We get several scenes of him doing his radio talk show where he talks to Christians about what they think of all of this. And a lot of Christians are more radical than his vision, who want, oh yeah, the Jews, the Muslims, they're all gonna die now. And Lester Stark is more lukewarm about things like that. And then Iran proclaimed their own holy man, the Mahdi, someone called Mohammed. And the Iranians suddenly become polite to Israel. They're like, okay, can we bring the Mahdi to Israel? Can he meet the Messiah? We will follow any terms you want. You can have your own pilot with your own plane. Bring him from Iran to Israel. You can do all the security measures you want to do. Things are a bit nuts when Israel and Iran are kind of getting along. And the Israelis agree to this because the Messiah says yes, and they have to listen to the Messiah. And you have Shem and Mohammed, the Messiah and the Mahdi who meet, and they go into the Jewish temple. Mohammed touches the Ark and doesn't die, so you can see there's something special with him. And then with the very end of the book, you have the incredible event. You have Shem the Messiah and Mohammed the Mahdi who go to the Temple Mount. And then you have Jesus literally floating down from heaven and coming down to them and he speaks to the Messiah and the Mahdi in Aramaic and he basically says I'm here to bring you to heaven you have a choice yes or no and both of them say yes so then they're brought up to heaven and disappear and after this Christians Jews Muslims they decide we're gonna stop killing each other so you have a de facto ceasefire in Syria for example the Albanians and the Serbs in Kosovo calm down even the leadership in Palestine they're like okay we have to rethink our thoughts about Jews now. Because the conclusion of this story, which Jesus states, is basically the Islamic vision, the Jewish vision, and the Christian visions are all correct. So the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, they are all valid forms of holy books. And that's how the story ends. So yeah, this is the weirdest thing I've ever read by Harry Turtledove. So how would I rate Alpha and Omega? I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10, and it's a strong 8, but for Turtle Love standalone, this is among the best I've read so far. This is better than Guns of the South or Joe Steele, and certainly much better than Ruled Britannia. And if you are interested in Christianity or Judaism or Islam, and about the end of days aspects, you should read this book. I usually don't think about religion that much, but this was definitely an interesting read, so it's definitely worthwhile, especially if you want to understand the Islamic, Jewish, and Christian perspectives of the end of days. Because this book makes quite clear that they have many similarities, but they also have some differences. You also get to understand the culture in Israel and the different type of Jews, secular, religious, ultra-religious, how life is on the kibbutz, how it is to be an archaeologist, so I like alternative history and I like this book also, so I would definitely recommend you to read Alpha and Omega, especially if you're interested in Israel or the end of days. 
If you're interested in learning about more of Harry Turtledove standalone books, then I would recommend you to check out my book review of Ruled Britannia, where you can see what happens when Turtledove writes something that's actually not that good. It's the only, it's his only boring book I've read so far. Anyways, I'm the Avid Reader and I will see you readers next time.